Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today, we're going to assemble a Dana 44 U-joint. I really wasn't planning on making this episode because I thought, what could be more boring than a U-joint install? It's so simple. Any idiot could do it. And then this idiot tried to do it, and I grenaded a perfectly good U-joint. So I ordered it. On the second one, I got it right, but I ordered one to replace the one I blew up because you need two, one on each side of the Data 44. And it just came in. Uh, the stock Bronco axles use a Dana Spicer model 5-260X. First, a word on taking it apart. To take it apart, you could use a press, but it's a bit unwieldy. I use this. I'm going to angle the camera down and we'll do it together. I'll tell you what I screwed up to. Now, uh, you know, if you are painting your axles like I did, you might get some overspray in these boards. Okay, when you buy the, uh, the U-joint kit, you get the four retainers and the U-joint itself. These caps come off. They have to come off for the install. And they're filled with these needle bearings. And those are what I call Satan's little children. Because they don't like to stay where the factory put them. But you have to take them off because as far as I can tell, the only way to get these in here is to get a certain angle, just so, to get it past and into the, uh, and it's like, it's you just, it's like, it's, I can't even repeat it on cue. It's kind of crazy. You have to get the seal past the thing, and it's not a forced thing. When it goes, it just, it just kind of goes, man. Just kind of work it. You'll you'll you just keep playing with it like a few different ways, and eventually it will go in. I mean, it's just so close, but yet so far away. I think I need to take some more of this paint off. It might even be that it. That's it. It's just such a tight tolerance. Something I just noticed. There's. It's been gouged right there. So there's a high spot, so I'm just going to grab um, my hone and hit this a little bit, try to get that high spot down. I'm going to do this over the trash can though, so I don't throw out chips on my clean stuff. It's not even close. I'm, I'm a terrible mechanic. Okay, I just put this in the vise the reverse way to try to spread it out a bit. See if that made a difference. There you go. You see that? Don't ask me to do it again. What I did wrong last time was I did not make sure these were fully seated. And I just threw it in the press. And that's not what you want to do. See even there, that little guy. So these were cockeyed. I pressed it together and this thing basically grenaded. So what you want to do is very carefully, very in a very centered and controlled fashion, put it in like that, all right? I get my little bearing driver, and I put it on here, and make sure it doesn't fall down. And then I... Make sure it rolls, all right? If it's rolling, chances are it went in okay. okay. So that's almost there, still spins freely, great. Now this is far enough up that you can, you got your needle bearings that you can carefully get it in there, and I'm still not confident. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going here. So that's almost as far as you can go before you, you really need to give it the good stuff. So there you go. Now that, that's in there, right? Now I'm gonna put this on here and give it a tap. Okay. Does it spin? It spins, okay? So that's a good sign that your needles are okay. Oh yeah, see that's good. Now it's there, now you can put it in the press 
or you know your vise or whatever and just push those together so i'm going to just put it in the vise okay when i put it in the vise it engaged this side more than that side that's okay now you go get your retainers these are weird you wouldn't think these would hold in because they're not really all the way around but sometimes it gets stuck though make sure you wear your safety glasses because when these things fly i mean they shoot everywhere gloves are probably a good idea too what happens is if you don't put it in centered it doesn't want to sit okay it's going to spring shot clear across the garage true story now i can fully see that groove this should pop right in should pop right in should pop right in there you go that that positive snaps what you're looking for so now i just got to get that side in so i'm going to put this in my vise and squeeze like that it's not going this is too deep so that's where this comes in loud noises nope so you can see here the edge is too far out so i'm going to go to my press for this basically put this on top and then press down so this was requiring way too much force to get in so I'm basically I pressed it back through I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna investigate I have a feeling one of my needles went cockeyed again okay it looks okay I don't know what I did any different but for whatever reason that time it went in smooth okay Did I mention I love my 20 ton press? So this side's retaining ring will go in harder because it's usually, oh, no, that went in pretty good. So that's in there. So that's one side done. And it's gonna be, there's gonna be plenty of drag that's okay, right? You don't, it's not supposed to be loose. Now, oh man, this is the worst. I gotta do all that I did before. Oh, look at that. See, that's how it would, oh God. Okay, anyway, very carefully put it in there. Okay, that felt good. Drop my little thing in there and as I was going to the press, things got a little cockeyed. So I'm gonna, see, I, oh, oh, that's the worst. So all these needle bearings came out. So you gotta pull all these out and you gotta line them back up. That's where a pick comes in handy. Oh, there's a hider back there. Where are you going, little fella? Huh? Where are you going? All bearings count for, sir! Now you have the fun job of getting those aligned the way they, probably wanna clean your workbench before you do this too. You get the fun job of getting these lined back up all in a row. It's pretty incredible that this is able to take all of that stress. These little tiny needles. The main thing is you want to make sure they're all sitting up flush against the bearing surface. They tend to want to slide down and there's a ridge at the bottom that they ride on. If they fall off of that ridge, then when you're pressing, oh, it's bad news. They're all lined back up. They're all straight, but you gotta be patient, guys. You gotta be so patient. I just needed the press for that last little bit of persuasion. It's the fourth and final clip. On. Done. Okay, that's it. Got my U-joint done, nice and Firm, positive feel, deceivingly simple, simple but deceiving, I don't know. All I know is it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, so I thought I'd make this video for you guys. Shoot me an email at mattsgarageshow at gmail.com, that's mattsgarageshow at gmail.com if you want to tell me how big of an idiot I am because there's a much easier way to do it. But uh, So that was actually the first step in getting towards my Dana 44 build. Um, You'll either see just before this video or just after my Ford 9 inch build, uh, which is now done, the center section. Now I'm going to get into doing the D44. Uh, the axles are done. 
Uh, all I'm really waiting for is all my bolts to get plated. So all of the, the carrier bolts on the nine inch, the retainer plates for the nine inch axles, my spindle uh, bolts for the Dana 44, all that stuff is out getting CAD plated and it should be done end of January. My goal is to have the Bronco on its own wheels and tires with the Tom's Bronco parts four wheel disc brake kit installed and on it by like end of February. Stay tuned to see that happen on Matt's Garage.